Hey, what's going on, you beautiful people? My name's Tie-Dye. I hope you guys had a pretty awesome day today. My day's been pretty awesome so far. So in today's video, what we're gonna do is uh, jump into Substance Painter for the first time here on my channel. I'm gonna bring you guys a tutorial on the introductory to Substance Painter. Essentially, we're gonna go over the basics, how to sort of navigate, and I actually have a little list of things here as to what we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover uh, setting up a file, importing your models and textures, turning on those textures, the interface itself, the brushes and stencils, which is obviously a very important part, the materials, and then I'm gonna do a a live demo is just sort of how to texture an object like this as well as how to export the maps so you can import them into things such as unity or unreal or marmoset or uh, whatever you're trying to plug in your textures to so let's just uh, check out this scene right now so this is kind of what my uh, missile looks like at the moment I have all these different layers set up but we're gonna start with a blank file so to do that we're just gonna go to file and new and we're going to be greeted with this new project uh, window right here. So it has a bunch of different settings here. For template, we're going to keep it at PBR Metal Rough Shelf. Now what this is, is there's different sort of lighting and uh, sort of ways that materials interact with each other based on these settings. So by default, when I opened it up, it was on Dota 2 and it affected how shiny things were. Things couldn't actually have a very, very high level of metallicness to them. So by default, I would highly recommend keeping it on PBR Metal Rough. Uh, this way, everything's going to look as natural as possible and is good for for sort of realistic looking things and by default you can kind of get any look you're going for in this one so highly recommend keeping it on that setting uh, the mesh this is where you're going to import your model itself so for this one I'm just going to use this torpedo uh, or missile whatever you want to call it this is just for a side project I'm working on for a contest for Ubisoft and uh, for normal map we're going to keep it on direct X and for document resolution I'm going to bring this up to 2048 this is how big the textures that we're working with are going to be and how we can export them and all that kind of stuff we can change it later on but uh, a general rule of thumb is to always have it bigger than you actually need it to be that way you can scale it down if you so happen to uh, have to scale it down because it's a lot easier to scale down than to scale up and then if we have already uh, existing maps for this we can also add those so I can just find some of those there for my torpedo and just for an example, I'm going to import a normal map that we already have. And I'm going to press OK. So this is what it looks like by default. And um, it looks uh, relatively similar to maybe other 3D applications. If you're wondering how to navigate through this window, it's kind of like Maya in the sense that you hold Alt and left click is going to be sort of your rotate. Uh, holding Alt and right click is going to be your scale. And holding Alt and middle mouse is going to be sort of to, to pan it around. Uh, like so my middle mouse is a little bit busted right now so it's a little bit harder for me to pan it around like that without it completely messing up and zooming in like so but essentially this is how you pan around like that and uh, we also have different views here for this window so f1 by default is going to show us both our model as well as our uv sheet which is really really useful because say we want to paint onto one and see what happens or see what happens on the other you can see that in real time um and vice versa right so really easy to see both of these at the same time and then f3 is just going to be your uvs here so i like to work in f1 um but a lot of the times i'm going to be working in f2 as well f3 not so much unless i'm trying to get very specific detail on there but all three of these views are very very useful uh, moving on to sort of the ui itself though we have a bunch of different stuff here for example file obviously very self-explanatory edit mode plugins all that kind of basic stuff uh, up here we have what appears to be some complicated option uh, options but uh, it is very very simple it is very like um, photoshop in a lot of senses you have your brush your eraser your projection your polygon fill which i'm going to dive into a little bit later on very very useful tool smudge clone all that we do have some symmetry options as well and for the most part, very, very familiar tools for a lot of people. We also do have the uh, Substance Share website, which is a great website where you can download all these preset materials and stuff from people who are making them themselves, as well as alphas and all that kind of stuff, all for free. Really great if you're using this program to check it out. And for those of you who don't know, uh, if you're a student, you can actually get this program for free. I think it's a year license for free, but then you can just renew it. So very, very useful stuff. Very, very great. And I highly recommend checking out this program. Uh, you guys actually did vote for me to do this tutorial on Twitter. So if you guys want to vote for my next Tutorial, make sure to check out my Twitter page follow me on there uh, I did ask you guys what you wanted to see and this is what you guys did want to see the most so that's why I'm bringing it to you guys right now um, so that's essentially the top bar there on the right we have this layers sort of option here and this is very similar to Photoshop as well we have our add layers we have our uh, blend options we have our opacity delete create groups all that kind of stuff we have our layer options when you right click on it such as um, creating masks which we are gonna do in a little bit 
Uh, underneath it, we have our texture settings. So this is more or less when you're setting things up at the very start. So at the very start, you saw me import a normal map. So the way that I would actually apply that is by clicking select normal map and then just sort of finding where it was. And I believe it's right here, missile default. So now if I zoom in, I'm just going to press uh, F2 just to get to my 3D view. You're going to see these uh, normal map. Um, man, this, this mouse is kind of annoying being busted like this. Um, let's see here if I can even drag it over. Wow. Okay, there we go. So now we have our normal map applied. So it's just sort of like height information reacting to light in real time without actually affecting the geometry as you can see there. Uh, for those of you who don't know normal maps, that's essentially what that does. It is sort of like information on a texture that tells you how the the height information is adjusted essentially, which is really, really useful, really cool. And you can make a lot of them super easily in Substance Painter. So that's how I'd apply it there. Say you have one that you want to import later on though, uh, you could just go to your texture tab here on the shelf and drag it in there. And then you'll be able to find all your textures in here as well. Same with alphas or anything else that you want to drag into there. You can always drag those in. And I'm just going to do an example for that just to show you what that is like. So I'm just going to go and find a texture that I would import. Uh, let's see here. Let's just say I wanted to import in this this um, map right here. I'm not going to apply it, but just say I wanted to. And just for an example, I would go to my textures tab and drag it in there. And it's going to give me three options here. I can import it for the current session only, which means when I close out of the program, it's going to go away out of my texture box. I can import it to the project. So if I save this file, it's always going to be there in this save file. And I can import this texture to the shelf, which means no matter when I open up Substance Painter, that texture is always going to be there, which is great if you're going to be using a preset that you're using uh, over and over again. So for this, I'm just going to do uh, for current session, as you can see, it is there and if I go to my normal map say that was another normal map uh, I can easily find it and apply it right there and this also goes for other things such as curvature maps uh, ambient inclusion and stuff like that so really useful to apply stuff uh, in a very very simple and easy manner and like I said you can do this for alphas as well and brushes and, and whatnot whatever you're trying to use essentially um, so now that that stuff is out of the way we can start to dive into the brush settings which is sort of like the meat and potatoes of this program in a sense because this is sort of a painting program and as you can see right off the bat it's very simple to just sort of dive into it and start coloring on things it's really responsive in the sense that it can tell what angle you're trying to come from without sort of distorting things because with 3d programs it's very easy to distort things when you're uh, sort of going from an angle and whatnot right like it'd be easy for me to do that and see it sort of jump all jump all over the place sort of thing um, but in this program, it's really well optimized and really well done. So we're going to dive into the brush settings here. This is very similar to Photoshop, like I said. So first of all, we have our size settings. So how big do you want the brush itself to be? And in the top here, it sort of represents how that looks as well as like the color and whatnot, which is really, really helpful when you're trying to uh, set up your brushes and whatnot. Your flow. So uh, essentially how you want it to sort of come out. It's kind of like hardness in, the, in a manner. Um, with very slight differences. So if you pair flow at 100% with hardness at 100%, which is located down here, you're going to get a very straight line. Um, I'm just going to drop hardness again until we get there. Uh, spacing is kind of like, as you can see here, um, our alpha is just a circle. So how much space do we want between every circle? Kind of for polka dots like that. If I bring it all the way up, they're going to be very far apart. And if I bring it all the way down, it's going to be a very constant line. Uh, size jitter, this is if you want some variation and randomness. Um, so how different do all the sizes to be? I'm going to bring my hardness up just to show you guys this as an example. Um, as well as my spacing. So with my size jitter, as you can see, there's different size circles now. My flow jitter is going to affect sort of the opacity of that. Uh, the angle, obviously you can't tell because it's a circle, but it would be rotating these. And position jitter, it's going to sort of move those all over the place. So now we get like a polka dot bubble effect right there. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know a lot of this stuff for the most part. And I can now change my alpha. There's a bunch of preset alphas, but like I said, you can import your own. So say I want to add like scratches or something. Uh, really, really easy to go in and do that. Three circles. Like there's just a bunch of really random shapes. So just for this tutorial, I'm going to stick to the circle. Just so it's an easy thing to uh, wrap your head around if you are new to this. And now once we go down here, we can find something called stencil, which is really, really useful. So say I want to add some text or something. What I can do is I can import a custom stencil to the alpha channel or the alpha uh, shelf right there. And let's say I want a, hmm, uh, let's see. Let's see here. What do I want? Let's say I want this sort of grid pattern. So as you can see, it pops up over here now. 
And uh, if I just draw onto this, it's only going to draw on that grid, which is really useful. Say I'm drawing on a, a texture that is already pre-made and something really, really specific. If I'm just drawing on this grid, it's going to be super, super helpful. And like I said, you can import just text files, or not text files, but like um, alphas of just text and stuff like that. So you can get text on there or logos or anything like that. It's kind of like a spray paint stencil in a sense. And if I go to my other view, it could even be easier if I wanted on a very specific location, just a patch of it. But that's one way, and then if you want the stencil gone, you just have the little X under the stencil. Um, so that's a really, really cool tool that I use all the time. Uh, base color, obviously, is the color, so maybe we can change this up a little bit. Maybe do a cool blue. Blue is my favorite color, of course. Um, this is what we're diving into some cool things. So we have all these options here, all these different channels that we're painting with. The color, height, uh, roughness, metal, and normal. So if I uncheck all of these, we just have our color here, right? But let's say I want height. Um, so I'm just going to put on my height and my normal. And for those of you who haven't worked with normals before, this is kind of cool. Um, if I bring my height all the way up, I can start painting with height. So now I'm going to rotate the uh, light. And as you can see, it's reacting to it in real time. The way that I'm doing that, by the way, is holding shift and clicking with my right click button and just sort of dragging sideways. So as you can see, it's affecting that in real time. And it's just uh, changing how high or low it is using this height bar down here. I can also drop it and sort of a carve in as well, which is kind of cool to see how that works, considering it's not affecting the um, silhouette of the shape at all, it's just from this angle, which is really, really cool. If you don't want any of that, of course, you can uncheck height and normal. Uh, you can also have rough and metallic. So if I want this to be really shiny, I can drop the roughness all the way down, or if I want it to be very matte, I can put the roughness all the way up. And same with metal, if I want it to be really shiny, I can bring it all the way up. And there's a decent amount of shine to that. And all the way down, it's going to be very matte as well. And you can see it in the top at this uh, little icon up here, displaying exactly how it's going to look. So if I bring the metallic up, it's going to be shiny. If I drop the roughness, it is going to be super shiny, like extremely shiny to do something like this, right? Which is a really, really cool tool to see it in real time there and then be able to apply it. But this is if we're making our own custom uh, brushes. We have all of these default materials and smart materials and smart masks down here. So what is the difference between all of this? Uh, smart masks, I'm not really going to dive into too, too much, but smart materials are pretty cool. So if I want to drop in maybe this uh, steel scratched, I just got to hold it, click it and drag it up here. And as you can see, we get this really cool effect right off the bat um, with a bunch of like scratches from our normal map and whatnot. And uh, really, really cool, really, really detailed. But the cool thing about smart materials is we can actually open them and affect each of these different things. So we can affect the steel base color, uh, the dirt and the color of the dirt, the um, the main sort of look of it itself. And you can do a bunch of different stuff. Uh, let's see here. So say I go into the dirt, I can change the uniform scale, the UV offset, same with the steel base. I can change the uh, UV scale. So how many times I want it repeating. You can get some interesting looks there. And if I want to sort of change the offset, so if say if I have a bunch of different options or a bunch of different objects uh, with the same texture, I can change the offset so it's not the same, change the rotation of it. And uh, that is pretty cool right there. I can change pretty much everything using this. So that is a pre-made smart material that you can find there. And like I said, you can import as many of these as you want from the website for completely free. But let's say I want to just use a default material. What's the difference between that and a default material? So here's a steel rough as well. There's a bunch of different steels uh, by default and it looks pretty similar, right? I still have options here like my UV scale, my UV offset, I have my color options, but this is kind of all in one. This is just a single layer, all in one package sort of thing. So that's mainly the difference. It's just sort of how much control you want to have over it or if you just want to sort of start with a base, um, which is cool. You have a bunch of different variety there, a bunch of different options. And of course, if you make a really cool material, you can save it and uh, make it as your own preset. I'm just going to delete this though. So how would I go about texturing something like this? Um, of course, you're going to want a lot of reference images, but essentially this is going to be sort of like a painted steel or a painted metal. And if we look into our materials, we sort of have a base thing to go off of here, which is our painted steel material. So I'm just going to click that and drag it onto our first layer. And this gets kind of a, a cool look that I'm going for here. I'm going to change the color of this because it's supposed to be sort of a Russian World War I style missile. Um, I'm going to get sort of like a dark and slightly faded red. This is just an example. I'm not going to go over the uh, full texturing process, but just enough to sort of get you guys off and uh, understand what I'm doing here. So I'm happy with this color, but I just want it to be on the tip 
and the end. So how would I go about doing that? So one of the cool things that you can do here is apply uh, masks to each layer. So I'm gonna right click this and add a black mask. So what this is gonna do is essentially beside our layer we have a black square and the square represents our UV sheet. So anything that I color in white is gonna pop up in this uh, box. So say I color something in white, I'm just gonna do that quickly. Um, whatever I color in white on the square is going to overlap to our UV sheet and color in there. So essentially that white dot corresponds to a white dot on here. And I'm just coloring white and whatever is white is gonna show up and whatever is black isn't gonna show up on this texture, which is really, really helpful. So I'm just gonna color this in black again by changing this white slider all the way to black on my grayscale. But I just want the tip, right? I just want the very tip of this to be uh, right on each end. So how would I go about doing that as cleanly as possible? Well, at the start, I brought up a tool called the Polygon Fill Tool, and we can affect color and all this kind of stuff just depending on the polygons because this is a 3D program, right? So let's say I just want the tip of this to be red. Uh, I'm gonna be in my Polygon Fill Tool, make sure I'm on my, um, my mask. With my color all the way in white to make sure things are popping up, I can just click and drag over the polygons that I want, and they all become affected by that color. I can do that at the other end as well. And just clicking and dragging over the polygons and since there is a uh, a polygon cut right there you can see it's not going to affect anything because it's not going to be able to overlap and essentially I can go into my other view as well and just do it quickly this way. And as you can see it's a really quick way to texture things, right? Very very fast. So I can do this again for another color so I can just apply that exact same painted steel and since I didn't affect the sort of UV rotation it's all going to be looking very similar and very constant. Uh, I can just change this to a dark gray just to keep it very quick and very simple. Once again right click and applying a black mask and then making sure my colors on white I can just select all these polygons here and as you can see, it's a different color now. And I can get a little bit more uh, specific here maybe. And um, maybe get these polygons in here as well. Because these are the tip. And let's see what else can I get in here just to sort of match the color. Maybe these fins on the back, which are represented by these on the UV sheet. As well as these guys right here. And these logos are just from my normal map. It's going to pop up there as well. Um, all right, so that's essentially the basis of that. I just want to add some metal to the, the routers there. So I'm going to sort of do the exact same step over again. I'm going to find a metal that's a little bit roughed out. Uh, let's see. Steel rough will do, the one we were using before. And once again, we're just going to add a black mask. This is just a very quick and easy way to do it. And just going to go over everything that is remaining which should just be the uh, propellers in this in this case so in a sense we kind of have the whole thing covered this is just sort of be like a, a very basic way to cover things right off the bat but now we sort of have metal there a color separation and everything like that if I wanted to I could go in and color this but if I were to color this I would kind of just do a stencil um, using my brush and sort of have my height up and my color all at the same time to make it really easy. Same with these bumps there. Um, it was just because I was already importing a normal map from scratch to demonstrate that. But one more cool thing that I can show you guys is sort of how I could go about uh, using those brush settings to create sort of like a rusted look on this kind of stuff. So what I can do is um, let's add a fine rust layer. So we have this very, very rusty sort of grungy disgusting looking thing because I sort of want an old looking missile style I can affect the rust color I might want to drop the um, saturation a little bit just to make it look a little less intense and from here what I can do is add a black mask once again and bring the color up to white again but this time we're going to use our brush tool to sort of add that in um, so we're going to put our, our grayscale all the way to white so when I paint on it I'm painting on that rust so a cool thing I can do now is change my alpha to maybe some of these weirder looking grungy alphas. Maybe this stone one could be a good one. And when I click on it, we're sort of getting this little bit of rust here. Um, I might even want to sort of drop my opacity a bit, just to make it a little bit more subtle. Or I could, I could try out my um, layer styles and whatnot. But now when I click on here, we're going to add little hints of rust to this, which, of course, this doesn't look the greatest, and you'd probably want to sort of go in here and change your angle jitter a little bit just to sort of get different angles and whatnot. And maybe 
occasionally change your alpha. Um, there might be better ones for this. Maybe the grunge one would look a little bit better for all I know. Yeah, probably a little bit better. And I'd probably want to drop my opacity a bit more. But you can get really detailed in here. You can go inside of here and specifically click on those. Or say you want to go directly into your... Um, your UV sheet, you can go into here and do that. Get some really cool details in on there. Just where rust would probably be. And I'm probably going to drop this opacity quite a bit. Just because it's a little intense. Um, but just to get some interesting looks like that. Just so it looks a little bit more beat up and a little bit more worn and torn, right? So that's the very basics of it. Oh, just hit my microphone. Sorry, guys. Uh, that's the very basics of it. So how would you go about exporting something like this? And of course, this is obviously not done. But this is just like, if you understand these concepts, you should be able to add the detail on yourself and layer it up. Uh, I like to keep my tutorials, you know, close to 20 minutes. So I'm going to cut it off here. But how would you export this? Uh, I would just hit right click, export textures. And there's a bunch of different presets as you can see here from our config. Uh, for this, you want to just use PBR Metal Rough, and you can see what that's going to be exporting if you drop down this. It's going to be exporting a base color map, a roughness map, a metallic map, normal height, and emissive map. Of course, you might not even need to, uh, need to use all of these, but uh, they're going to all export. Um, all of them are going to apply to these textures, and it's going to do it really, really quick, which is great, and it's going to be at 2048 by 2048, which is what we set it up to be. Uh, if you do want to change that, though, you can actually configure your own export settings. So there's all these default ones here. You can set up your own as to what maps are going to export. So if I go back to where we were before, PBR Metal Rough, as you can see, that's what it's exporting there. Like so, you can sort of adjust everything. I'm not going to dive too into uh, too deep into this because this is its own tutorial on itself. But that's just kind of how you would set that up. And uh, by default, PBR Metal Rough is great. So you just choose a location for it to export to. In this case, the desktop. Hit export. It might take a second depending on your computer or how big the files you're trying to export or how many there are. But uh, as you can see, relatively quick. And now if I go to the desktop, I have all of these maps that we just made and I can plug this into any other program such as Marmal Set or uh, whatever I'm trying to do and we have all of our textures here. So that's essentially how you're going to be doing it guys. Uh, very great program. There's a lot you can do with it. It's the industry standard. And like I said, I think students now can use this program for free, which is great if you don't want to pirate it or anything, which obviously you shouldn't. I don't I don't really recommend anything like that, but uh, most people get around to doing that at some point. So anyways, guys, hopefully you did learn something from this. Hopefully you guys can sort of use this information to create awesome things. Send me your stuff. Uh, I'd love to see what you guys are making with this uh, over Twitter or maybe even Facebook. So keep it, uh, keep it awesome, guys. Uh, hopefully you can uh, learn some great stuff from this and apply this program in many different ways. But if you guys did make it this far into this video, a like would be amazing, comment something new, and subscribe if you uh, have just landed on this channel. But once again, guys, my name has been Ty, and I hopefully enjoyed the video, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.